We have another unboxing today, and this little snake is from none other than ball python legend Ozzy Boyds. This is an awesome little guy, and he is going to help me with a project that I'm working on. And speaking of that project, it's been a while since I've been to the board and talked about genetics. So I'm going to get out my rudimentary art supplies, crayons, tape, maybe paste, I don't know. And we're going to talk about recessive genes. Welcome to the green room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. Let's unbox this awesome new snake. And then because this new little boy has some recessive genes going on and the unboxing that I did a few weeks ago uh, had two little boys that had some recessive genes going on, this is a good time to try to demystify this 66%, 50%, 100% uh, recessive thing that we hear thrown around a lot. It confuses a lot of new people and a lot of not new people. Oh my god, I'm so bored already. I'm gonna fall asleep and drop my camera. That's my brother Kent, our cameraman. Kent, don't worry. I'm gonna make it exciting. It's gonna be cool. And if I fail, you can add excitement with Kent's Corner. Hey, don't pressure me to come up with excitement just because you're doing a boring genetics video. It's not boring, Kent. It's interesting. And I'm gonna keep it going. I promise. Let's start with the unboxing. That's exciting, right? Okay, let's look at this little boy that I just picked up. I noticed on Morph Market that Ozzy Boyd's had a male that potentially matches with the genetics in Molly Malone, and I didn't have a, a match for Molly Malone yet. So uh, the deal is this, Molly, let's get Molly out real quick. Molly Malone is an ultra male, that's a recessive gene. Uh, she's got two copies of that gene, and that's why she looks like an ultra male. She is het for pied, we're going to talk about that. And she's also 66% het hypo. And I don't usually, I don't think I usually mention that when I talk about her. I usually just say that she's ultra male het pied because the hypo, when I got her, didn't, I, you know, it didn't really matter to me that she was 66% het hypo. But that's a project that Garrick DeMeyer has been working on for a while. And I, this is, this is one that Garrick produced. So I noticed that Ozzy had this boy that is a pied. He's a, he's a leopard inchy pied, 100% hypo, het hypo, and 50% het ultra male. So I'm rolling the dice a little bit with this pairing in trying to prove out her hypo-ness because she's 66% and his ultra male. So we'll see what happens, but let's talk about what all this means. I'm going to put Molly Malone away. He's really low white because of Enchi. That's what Enchi does to pied. You get a very low white snake, which is cool when you want to see some of that awesome patterning. We're going to talk about recessive genes when we go to the board. And uh, the easiest way to think about this is dominant versus recessive. Now, within dominant genes, there are some categories. There's just dominant genes, co-dominant, co what we call codom, which isn't really a thing with, with snakes, but we say it all the time and incomplete dominant, which is really what codom is. Doesn't matter though, we're not talking about that. We can group them all together as, and think of them as dominant genes versus recessive genes. And what that means is that when you have one copy of a dominant gene, it will show up and you can see that in the snake. When you have one copy of a recessive gene, that gene is recessive to everything else. In other words, anything else is gonna show up and that gene will not show unless you have two copies. Here's an example. This is Lydia Dietz. She has two recessive genes going on. She is homozygous for clown, and that means she has two copies of the clown gene. You can see it. She is totally a clown. And she's heterozygous, or het, meaning one copy of a gene for pied. So she's a clown het pied. We don't see any pied in her because she only has one copy of the gene. And we know she has that one copy of the gene because one of her parents was a visual pied. So uh, that tells us that she has to have a pied gene. That parent would have had to give every single baby a pied gene. We'll talk about that on the board. But uh, that's how we know she's het. So we can say she's 100% het pied. That 100% means that we are 100% sure that she's het pied. Not that she, that she could potentially be a fraction of, of a het. That's not what that means. That just means 
how likely is it that she is that she's het for pied? And in her case, it's 100%. So let's go to the board and look at some of those instances where a snake could be 50% het pied or 66% het pied. Figure out what that all means. Boring. Kent, just shoot the video. You don't ever pay attention to what I'm saying anyway. You need explosions or fire. You're afraid of fire. I will face my fear. With the aid of my bravery, we will add fire juggling to this video. You're gonna try to juggle fire? Crap no, I'm gonna film you doing it from a safe distance like I do with the snakes. It'll be today's Kent's Corner. Welcome to Kent's Corner, where I will be facing one of my biggest fears. I will be filming where fire is happening in the nearby area. You're very brave, Kent. I hope everyone's impressed by your bravery. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, where I do amazing feats of bravery f from behind the camera. I hope you're happy now, Kent. That waste of time had nothing to do with snakes. Well, you just got your thumbnail shot for the YouTube video. I mean, maybe, yeah. Folks, my Patreon supporters are fantastic. And here is a mid-video uh, tier two supporter scroll that I've been doing. I'm not scrolling all the way to the top. Can I get it to the top? Yeah. So uh, my Patreon supporters at all levels are helping me to uh, move this channel in a direction that's going to be really cool where I can uh, do some things that take a little bit more of a budget to do for the channel. So thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. What do you think of that scroll, you guys, right? A live action credit scroll. Thank you so much to those Patreon supporters. They're helping me with the channel and I'm in turn giving them some additional content, some exclusive sticker packs. Kent's giving them a, an exclusive Kent only video every month. Um, there's a bunch of a bunch of perks and I'm going to add more as I think of them. So you guys, there are a lot of videos online that explain genetics, but they're all a little bit different and genetics can be confusing, especially at first. And so different ways of explaining are helpful to different people. So I have my way of doing it uh, that, that seems to work for some people. Please let me know in the comments if this works for you or if it doesn't. A lot of people use Punnett squares, which are uh, the scientific way of explaining genetics. But even though that's a visual explanation, not everybody gets that. Um, and also not everybody's gonna get the way I do it too. So give it a try and hopefully it works for you. So what I do here in these videos is I've got these little pieces of tape and these dashes. These represent I guess the snake's chromosome, but we can also look at it as just the snake. You can look at it as a snake, but it would be their chromosome. So we're going to call these the two parents and these are the four babies. Now, generally speaking, and we're not talking about allelic genes here. Generally speaking, when you have a, uh, when you have a gene for a certain uh, morph, you can either have none of that gene, you can have one copy, or you can have two copies. And those gene copies have a assigned seat that they sit on the on the chromosome. So let's say it's pied. We're going to call these yellow ones pied. Pied sits right here. That's one copy. So that so a snake could have a copy of of normal right there. Now, I don't want to confuse things, but I do want to say that there is no such thing as a normal gene. And we've talked about this before, but normal just means all the genes that we have that, that we haven't identified yet. Uh, that's what we call normal, but it is easy to think about it as its own gene. But the fact is that either pied is here or it's not here. So we're just going to call that the normal gene. Um, so here's one copy of pied, or you could have two copies of pied and they sit on this spot on the chromosome. So in the case of this pied, this, this would be a visual pied, right? Because it has two copies like we talked about. When they have two copies, they're, they're visual. And if they only have one copy, they're not a visual. And you can't tell by looking at them whether they're pied or not. And we're not gonna get into recessive markers and things like that, but generally you can't tell by looking at them uh, w whether they are uh, pied or not. So we're gonna call, we're gonna have these, um, these uh, I guess red, what is this, pink, hot pink, whatever, whatever color this is, is gonna be normal. And yellow is going to be pied. We're just going to use pied as our recessive gene for this uh, for this chat. So let's real quick look at what happens when we pair a pied to a normal. Now, when a snake 
has offspring. It doesn't really matter if this is male or this is female, but let's just say that this is, this is our male. We have a male visual pied to a female normal. What happens is the snake has to give one copy from each allele, from, from each spot, each seat. They, they, I mean, uh, yeah, from each location is, is what I mean. So one copy of pied can't give both, but, but has to give one. And mom also has to give one. So this is a really easy thing to, to visualize, but we'll just do it. So what's gonna happen is, let's say dad gives this copy of his pied. So that's, that's coming down to this baby right here. Mom gives her copy of normal from the left-hand side. That goes to that baby. Uh, now let's say dad gives this copy of pied again to the next baby. Mom gives this normal from that side to that baby and so on. You see what's gonna happen the whole, the whole time. Now dad jumps to this side and gives pied. Mom gives normal, dad gives this pied again. Mom gives this normal. So we're gonna end up with all hets. All of them are hets. And the fact that dad was a visual pied, we know 100% that those are hets because he doesn't have an option to give anything else. So that's why these end up being 100% het pieds. We can't tell by looking at them that they're pieds, but because we know what the pairing was, we know that it's 100% het pied. So when you go to buy an animal and the breeder tells you that it's 100% het pied, you better trust that breeder. I mean, um, you, you better feel like you can trust that breeder because you won't be able to tell by looking at it. So. Uh, you want to make sure that that's a reputable breeder, that they're being honest with you. You can talk about, you can look at, you know, ask for pictures of the, of the parents or whatever to make you feel comfortable that they're, you know, being honest with you. Most are going to be honest there. I don't think that's a big problem with people being lied to, but it does happen. So now let's mix it up a little bit. Look at Echo right here. Hi babes. You just sleeping right there. Uh, okay. So let's mix this up. Let's pull these off. Now let's say we've got this situation. We have a het to a... Aw, oh, man. And we've got a het to a het. So, let's start with dad giving his pied. Let's say that he gives his pied to baby number one. And mom gives her pied to baby number one. Now let... Oh, come on. Man. Baby number one gets a pied from mom and dad. Now dad gives his pied to baby number two. And mom gives her normal to baby number two. I hate that these sticky notes are not sticky. And so, all right, so now let's jump over to the normal from dad. Dad gives his normal to baby number three. Mom gives her pied to baby number three. Dad gives his normal to baby number four. Mom gives her normal to baby number four. So now we've got a visual pied. We've got two hets and a normal. The problem here is that we can't tell out of these three, out of these two hets and this normal, they're gonna all look like normals. So we don't know which is which are hets. So one third of this would be thirty-three percent. Two thirds of of this. So we know that we're taking this guy out of the equation, the the pied. Two thirds is sixty-six percent. That's how we get sixty-six percent possible het. So what we're saying here is that is that. Each of these babies in the clutch has a 66% chance of being het. They either are het or they're not het, but we're not going to know that until we breed them and, and prove them out. Once we breed them and prove them out, then we can say they're hundred percent het or, or they're not het. They either are or they aren't. But for now, until we've proven them out, there's a 66% probability that they're het. So that's what Molly Malone is. She is 66% possible het for hypo. And what that means is that her parents were both hets. All right, now let's look at this situation. 
This is a normal to a het, okay? So we'll start with dad again. Dad's gonna give his pied first. He's gonna give his pied. Mom's gonna give her normal. Dad's gonna give his pied again to baby number two. Now mom's gonna give her normal from to that from that side. Dad, now we're on normal for dad. Dad's gonna give his normal. Mom's gonna give hers. Same situation here. Dad gives his normal. Mom gives her normal. So we have no visual pies in this scenario. We have half of them are normal, half of them are hets. But again, we can't tell which is which. So this is where we get the 50% possible het. If you have a 50% pos het animal, that means that their parents, one parent didn't, wasn't necessarily just normal. It could have had other genes, but it, but it didn't contain the recessive gene that we're talking about. The other parent was het for it. So het only gives us a 50% pos het situation. So in the new baby's case that we just unboxed, He's 50% pos het ultramel. That means that one of his parents was het for ultramel, the other one was not at all. So you guys, a lot of my snakes are het for something and I like dealing with 100% het. I like to know that Bear here is a pied 100% het clown and he's going to uh, Lydia Dietz who is a clown 100% het pied. There's no guessing whether there's clown or pied on both sides. The Sundance Kid here is 100% Het Sunset, 100% Het Clown. There's no guesswork in that at all. So these kind of pairings, I like knowing for sure that, that my snake is Het. But I do also like the, the risk that I'm taking with this one pairing of Molly Malone and Captain Farrell. That's the new snake's name, by the way. Uh, Molly Malone is the name of a character in a very famous old Irish folk song called Molly Malone. And Captain Farrell is a character in a very famous old Irish folk song called Whiskey in the Jar. Uh, there's a character in that story called Captain Farrell. So I named him after a Irish folk song as well. Uh, but the point is that that I'm, I'm excited to look at that pairing and see what I can prove out. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to put the Sundance kid back here and he doesn't want to go back. He wants to explore. So I'm going to let him. Anyway, I'm excited about that pairing. I hope this worked for you guys. Let me know in the comments if that explanation worked for you or if it didn't. Would you like to see more of these genetic videos? I've done a few of them. Um, I did one on allelic genes. I did one on banana. I, I think I did a genetics 101. If you liked this, let me know in the comments. Hit the like button to let me know because this video won't get a ton of attention just because of the subject matter. Uh, maybe the thumbnail will help though. Maybe the fire, maybe the fire helps. I don't know. Oh man, come on. Oh, these fell again, come on.